title and to have as a particular title of the birthright video, calling it either St. George or Caduceus Argus, the Satan Bruiser slash Earth Blesser, which is all in the Bikurna. The Bikurna is the birthright. And I feel this is a very important point to touch on because we've been touching on some of the mystery, at least for the faithful, and the connection of Caduceus Georgis or, or St. George in connection with Old Testament and most importantly with Torah and this sixth Torah portion. Because Torah portions is not just for the Saturday, but it would be the meditation, we can say, of that particular, of, of, these, of these seven days. So the, the Sabbath or the Shabbat inaugurates the Eve, inaugurates it, so that Sunday will be the first day, the Ihud, when we all come together and use it to hear either a sibkat or a sermon on the particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, and the revelation, the revelation of this within the context of the particular community of the faithful. So we know that we're in the sixth uh, Torah portion reading and reading and feeding. And in this sixth Torah portion reading and feeding, we have the birthright. And in the last video that we posted, we touched on um, the birthright and the three elements, the three elements of the birthright. And I thought this was important to kind of go over this particular point again, but to put it within the, the um, the relativity or the relationship of Kedus Georgis or of St. George, because many of us know that that's uh, the patron saint of um, Ethiopia, of Kedus or Kedusiti to Ethiopia, of Holy Ethiopia, as well as of um, Great Britannia or Great Britain. But now the link really is through the black nobility. There's the black nobility. And if you don't know anything about the black nobility, I think. Um, essays by Ikoa, the sister Essays by Ikoa. She has some very good essays, and she touches on the black nobility. And there are other sources and resources, whether we go to J.A. Rogers and Nature Knows No Color Line, to really know that we was here, there, and everywhere as both uh, in, the, in, in the birthright as the Satan or the Satan or Shaitan bruiser, bruising the head of, of that old dirty dragon, as well as the earth blesser. This is one of the reasons why the slave trade was important to white supremacy, to be the earth blesser, because we brought that blessing to the earth. Black people brought over the successful cultivation of rice. And we, a lot of people think it came from China in that sense, but no, it actually came from Africa. So that's just an example of it. Now, we'll, people will say, well, if they were such earth blessers, you know, the little um, a crackhead racist will say, if they were such earth blesser, why is Africa the way it is right now? They ain't no looking at what's going on. Because they took the cream of the crop. Elijah Muhammad told you they took the cream of the crop and they brought them over here. Now, we as this diaspora, this generation, so here's a connection with the generation of, of Yishak, which the six sabbatical reading and feeding um, ushers in in this particular period of time um, in 2011, November 2011. So we want to briefly just touch on the, the St. George, right? St. George, right? Which is the patron saint of Ethiopia, of Ethiopia, and of Holy, Holy Ethiopia. Let's make that distinction. There's a difference between holy Ethiopia, true Ethiopia at home and abroad, and this secular Ethiopia or careless Ethiopians. You understand what's going on at home and abroad. So it's not just those over there, but you've got a lot of careless Ethiopians over here as well. So he is, this is all part of the birthright. You understand that St. George epitomizes the birthright. And St. George was a, was a real Hebrew, a real Ethiopian or black Hebrew, St. George was. And he was both the one, the Satan bruiser, 
right? He was the Satan bruiser, bruising the head of the Satan, of the old dragon, and he was the earth blesser, right? The Satan bruiser. But thirdly, which really kind of could come first, he was the Ross, right, or the head, you understand? The head, we'll say the head of the family, and being the head of the Beta Set, he had um, the rights of of the priestly functions in, in the Old Testament, and even when we go to the East, in Africa and the Middle East, it is the head of the family. Whoever is the male head of the family has those particular, or has that particular um, um, priestical, the priestical, like the priest, prophet, and king of that clan, of that tribe, you know, is, is the head of the family. So this, we, would, we would know this as the Aras. Now, we derive this teaching directly from the Schofield um, reference Bible, the footnote here, and then in studying these elements, but now we're building on the revelation of Rastafari and now making this connection with Caduce Georgis, with Holy George or St. George. Now, I don't know how much y'all might know of St. George or what you might have heard about St. George. You know what I'm saying? St. George and the, and, and the dragon. And what we would like to also bring forward as, as, as time and opportunity allows us, we had this book over here, um, but we might have moved this book because these are some references. And while we have the opportunity, we want to share with you all which references, which books, and as you all get the opportunity, you can look up these books and find these books for yourself. Now, We have this right here. We did some older CDs and DVDs. We all might not have an opportunity to show you some of the old C CDs and DVDs that we had done over the years, you know, because this still is the Exodus mission, you know, the home bringing mission. And we have to look forward to the next stages of operation. But the teachings are always important. You know what I'm saying? And this means, electronic digital means, can at least provide an opportunity to transmit this and also to point out the, the, the tools and reference materials. This right here is a book by Elizabeth Hatch. It's called uh, Sexual Energy and Yoga. Now, some might hear the title and say, oh, I'm not dealing with that. All right, all right. Okay, cool. Um, do what, you know. I said, do, do you, you know, do your way. We'll do Yah's way. We have to understand who St. George is a, real, is, a real, is a real person, is a real man. I want to get this uh, symbol of St. George. Um, I mean, we don't have it in, 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 in printout, but there was a chapter in here on, I think, Jacob's Ladder, Jacob's Ladder, and it showed a uh, characterization of um, St. George. And then we wanted to show the connection with his imperial majesty. And all of this is the description of the birthright, of what's known as the birthright. But then we noticed something very interesting, too, between the two type of Jews or Judaic, the two type of Judaics. In other words, we have the, the European Jews who say they are Jews, and then we also have this black Jew or this Judaic line from or through Ethiopia, that his imperial majesty, Ketamawi Haile Selassie, as the conquering line, here we go right here, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Here's, here's a picture of George. You see Georgis? Let's see if we can put this in full frame. You see Georgis right here? This is Georgis, and let's zoom in. He's carrying that banner, right? He's riding on that horse, and he is, some say, slaying the dragon, or wounding the dragon, but biblically speaking, he is bruising. He is bruising the dragon. Now, outside the UN, in New York, they have a picture of George slaying the dragon, and the dragon there is the military, is the missiles and nuclear bombs and the armaments. It's like the, 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 the sculptor created the body of the dragon, almost like a missile, a missile kind of a dragon that's being 
um, bruised by Georgis or by St. George. Now, St. George was a special, the special emblem of our godfather, the king of kings of Kedemawi Haile Selassie. We know that it's on his crown. If we could look at a, a close-up picture, it's, it's on the crown. He has as also the symbol on his, um, on his military and official hats or headwear and headgear. And he even says in the uh, May 5th, 1941 Independence Day speech, he even makes reference and we'll call this, he makes a special reference to uh, Caduceus, Georgis, or St. George. Now, what is behind this St. George? Here it says right here, this little footnote down here says, St. George has attained all consciousness and conquers the dragon. And they say the dragon is the sexual energy. He conquers. He doesn't slay it. You see, there's the key that you're the, you don't slay that energy. You conquer it. You understand? You transmute it. If you slay that, you, that's why asceticism was even spoken of against, or that extreme asceticism, you understand, was spoken against. But ones who didn't understood, understand, you know, they slew that energy. And that also create, creates other aberrations, perhaps even the child molestations and other things that are going on in certain religious, religious orders. But he does not slay him. And this, we found this to be very, very interesting. He does not slay him for he needs the fire. He needs the fire. The strength of the dragon. So the dragon has misappropriated, like Prometheus, fire from the Elohim from the God. So he has misappropriated this fire. You understand? So uh, Caduceus Georgius does not slay him, but he conquers him and takes back that rightful fire, which is the strength of the dragon, in order to reach Elohim, in order to reach God. Now, when we understand this in the Kabbalah, in the, in the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah, and the seven seals, you understand that's within man. We recognize that that sexual energy is the first, is, is the root chakra that's down by the sexual parts. You know, that's down by, you know, they said people are anal retentive and they use these kind of phrases and so forth and so on. That's all related to one being stuck on that lower level, that lower, almost like that animal and instinctual red meat, blood, blood, bloody, like fleshy level. You understand? But it's something that we all in spirituality and according to metaphysics have to overcome and we wrestle with. That's what the Bible is about, the flesh and the spirit and the spirit versus the flesh. And Hawadi Apollos showed us, even according to these principles, how we are to overcome that. You understand? How we are to transmute that. The secret of transmuting such energy because we all have those those sexual desires. Some deal with it differently, and some it has thrown them off, and, 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 and it, people will find it as a guilty thing, and I don't know how to deal with it, and most of the so-called religious folks don't really know how to so-called um, conquer, to conquer that dragon and to transmute, you understand, that lower carnal energy, you understand, by focusing correctly on the higher spiritual the higher spiritual values and the higher spiritual vibes. Now, with that being said, right, with, um, with that being said, and we just saw something right here. We just saw it. Did, did we see it? Did we really? Yeah, we saw it right here. Um, this is an older, a little cassette that we had done from such years. This one right here. This is a rarity because we hadn't had an option to show this in a while. Notice from one of the Ethiopic, you understand, the Ethiopia paintings, you understand, and we call this um, conquer the dragon, you understand, conquer the dragon. Now, many nowadays talk about slaying the dragon. A lot of it's called the miseducation because ones and ones haven't had opportunity to look at some of the original, when you talk about original sources, original references, when we go to the Mets, of the Gutters, we're going to original sources, not to a translation by somebody else or opinion on something by somebody whose knowledge of the Ethiopic is questionable. But we're going to the original sources and presenting it. This was um, called the Selected Ethiopian, Selected Ethiopian Chants of um, David. This is where some of I and I, Ayabingi Ethiopic and Amharic chants, we have put this 
forward and we're seeking to put this particular one forward but this is another characterization of the slaying of the well the, the conquering of the dragon that's misunderstood today as slaying as slaying so there's a big difference between the two whether you are seeking to conquer the dragon or whether you are seeking to slay you understand did Mikael caduce Mikael did he conquer the dragon or did he slay the dragon he conquered it he cast him down and his angels down he conquered the dragon he did not have authorization to slay or even attempt to slay the dragon he conquered the dragon he cast him down he over he overcame the dragon and such did Abu Kedus as well now the connection and the key all that being said is what we have in this Torah portion reading and feeding that we know as the RSS number six and Bamarinya we'll call it the two to lid right we'll call it to lid in the in the Judaic they'll call it to ledot or to dot you know saying to lid because of their reading of the of the square Hebrew and their fourth Hebrew they read it like that we say it from the purity of the met of Kedus as to lid the generations now Kedus Georgis let's just go over this one more time and we touched on this before and we made a reference to it but the birthright that Esau, now, the thing that we notice about Esau, and we just shared this with our beloved, the thing we know about Esau and Jacob, right? Esau, if you ask a lot of our Hebrew Israelites, and they're not completely incorrect with this, you understand, though to some degree there's some ext extremism or extremism, Esau, right, would be like the Euro Jews, right? Esau is like the Euro Jews. And then you have Jacob, that black Jacob. Some can say that Jacob, in a sense, when you understand Jacob, Jacob was like a Nancy. Some of you know about Nancy, right? Or Br'er Rabbit, you know, brother, brother Rabbit. He was like the trickster. In a sense, that's exactly, some say that the whole Nancy and Br'er Rabbit comes from the Jacob, you know, the African so-called trickster. And even Gerald Macy points out there is the black God. The black God is that Jacob, later to become Israel, later to become Israel. So Jacob is like the Beta Israel, or we would say the black, the black Hebrews and the black Jews. And remember, there, there's 12 tribes, you know. So some say, well, who's right? Is it the black Hebrew Israelites? Is it these Ethiopian Hebrews, that community, the African uh, Hebrews of Jerusalem? Which one? Is? Remember, there's 12 tribes. There's 12 tribes. So it is quite possible and probable for even the black Jews to be exactly like they're saying, who they are, and we as Ethiopian Hebrews to be who we are, and the other Jewish or Hebrew, black Hebrew communities that may have different doctrinal interpretations or opinion depend on what particular leader or charismatic has been able to have that gift to bring them out of darkness from being lost into being found as being Beta Israel. If they are Beta Israel and have reclaimed that half of the story, that is a good foundation and more growth is necessary in us all. But to recognize how the whole family comes together, even though we may have certain, like the Bible says, that even though those Jews were, were Hebrews and of the seed, Hawaii Apollo said that they are enemies because the gospel, because we proclaim the gospel of the king of kings. So on that level, they're enemies, but of the ancestors, of the fathers, they are beloved. Of, of our Hebrew fathers, of, of those who have gone on, you know what I'm saying? They are beloved. So, yes, they are part of the family. But the main thing we notice in this portion, reading and feeding from, from Tol, uh, Toledot or Toledot or Tulid, you understand, the six uh, sabbatical um, reading and feeding that comprises um, Genesis chapter 25 and 19 to about. Genesis chapter, I think it's 28 and 9, roughly 28 and 9. That's this uh, week's uh, reading and, 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 and feeding, 28 and 9. Yeah, Genesis chapter 25, 19 to Genesis chapter 28 and 9. When we, once we got to the barakat or the blessing, which is one of the major themes to be discussed in this 
in this uh, Sabbatical portion, we saw Esau as being those, the European Jews, we could say the Ashkenazi, and maybe even some of the Sephardics, depends on which way they would like to, you know, they would like to uh, uh, recognize themselves. Really, they're from that black part, the black Jews and Hebrews that were in Europe, part of that black nobility. Our purpose in talking about that is to connect the black nobility. How did England, as well as Ethiopia, both have Caduce Georgis, St. George, as their patron saint? How did both of them, you understand, have this connection? His Majesty points that out in the Independence Day, May 5th, 1941 speech. He gave five years to the very day to prove that he was Moa on Bessas the Imma Negeta Yehuda, the conquering line. When one, even Marcus Garvey and others, thought that Haile Selassie was overcome, he proved that he was the conquering line, which is directly proof of that, of that biblical prophetic description. To be a Moa or conqueror, you have to be in a position where everybody thinks it's over for you. It's done. Son, it's done. It's over. But you overcome in a way that they're like, I can't believe it, even using so-called Satan, again, Satan, or some of the Europeans who might not have been so happy, even the British, some of them might not have been so happy about having to fight against other white men. But some of them were down with Hitler, thought that Hitler, you know, like the Kennedy father and the rest of him, they were all like murky in bed together, all of that. But we see a direct difference between Jacob, representing the Beta Israel, or the Ethiopian Hebrews. We can also put right here the Ethio, the Ethiohebs. You understand the Ethiohebs, and on the other side, you understand we have the Ashkenazi. You understand, or the Ashkenazi. So we see this direct division between the two, Asile, which reconciles even what many of us know is historical, is scriptural. You understand, and that is the one who gets the inheritance. This is the key. Who gets the inheritance? Who had the or the birthright? The one who had the birthright before was Esau, was Esau. This is why you find the so-called European Jews, it seems. And not the secular ones especially, because we have the same problem among the secularists, even in Rastafari or even as Ethiopians or as black folks, the ones who are just so materialistic, they couldn't see God if God smacked them inside the head. They just can't, they, they, I mean, they, they, to them seeing is believing you know, you, you, on that level. They can't walk by faith. They have to walk by sight. But... Esau would live by the sword. You know what I'm saying? It's that Esau, so whenever Jacob was down, then he would take, you know, the blessing was that the older would serve the younger. The older one would serve the younger, and Esau was the older one. But Jacob grabbed the heel. He is the heel grabber. Now, Esau sold his blessing, his barakat, not really fully comprehensive of what the barakat of the blessing was. Jacob you understand, we would say from another level, Africa, you understand, may not have or al Kabulan or Yaqabulan, Jacobulan, you understand, maybe they didn't even understand either, as it says right now, that Jacob's conception of the Bukurna at that time was doubtless, without a doubt, it was carnal and adequate as well. You understand, many of our conception of what this birthright is being Israelite or Beta Israel is, it is carnal, still has a lot of fleshy because we still just have come, just are recognizing the basic little baby steps and inadequate, but it was his desire, his willingness for it that was an evidence, you understand, that was an evidence of what was the true faith, you understand, what was the true faith. So you see this division between Esau being the European Jews or representing the European Jews and Ashkenazi, you understand? And then Jacob representing the Beit Israel, the house of Israel. Remember his new name was Israel. And in prophecy being the Ethiohebs or the Ethiopian Hebrews at home, both in Ethiopia, Ethiopia and abroad, 400 plus years in this um, the diaspora, especially in the Americas and throughout the Caribbean. So the birthright had these three parts, Satan bruiser, you understand, the Satan bruiser. Let's just go over this one more time. There are three elements to it. 
the first element was until the establishment of the Aaronic priesthood, the head of the family exercised priestly rights. So until the Aaronic priesthood was established, whoever was the head of that particular clan or family, they were the ones who had that priesthood right. You understand? Know That's the first aspect of a birthright according to the Bible, not according to all this modern confusion, Babylon, but according to the Scripture. So until the establishment of the Aaronic priesthood, now Aaron priesthood is Levi. Now what we'll find is that it comes back to Judah when we go to Hebrews. And we just want to put this down, and my brothers and sisters, take this down. Let's go to Hebrews quickly, Hebrews chapter 7. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. And what do we read in chapter 7, verse 11? This is because the ironic priesthood, nothing was, nothing was made perfect. It made nothing perfect, the ironic priesthood. It was just a kind of uh, a protection, a preservation until the perfection had come about. It said, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, Hebrews 7, 11, if therefore perfection were, were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. Under the Levitical priesthood, Moses and his brother Aaron, the people received Torah, you understand, or Tawaret. It says, um, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of the Melchizedek, after the order of Melchizedek, and not be called after the order of Aaron? Aaron, let's look here again. So for Jacob's line, the order of Aaron was, was done out. This is what Christ, the Moshiach, was trying to tell them. You understand, was trying to tell the so-called Jews, you understand, at that time, many of them ethnic, many of them black, and yes, I'm allowed those two. At that time, history will bear this out. But the clear evidence of who the Jews were were a race of the Ethiopians, according to Titus and according to the, the historians and, 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 and Titan and, and some of the, the, the witnesses of that time. And we point out this documentation before. But the priesthood was not done out because they still held to it and they rejected the Messiah. So what do we get? We get 70 A.D. where the Almighty said, listen, this is what my will is, and gave them, sent them the Messiah and all of that, and they turned their back on Yehoshua, on Yeshua. So we have 70 A.D. and that dispersion, this, the next dispersion into Africa, and then going beyond the rivers of Ethiopia from East Africa to West Africa. We built some kingdoms there that were Hebraic from Babylon to Timbuktu, but then eventually this prophecy of, of, of Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68 so the 68 had to be fulfilled, we would return into a, another Egypt. And that's when the transatlantic Ethiopic Ocean slave trade, that now brings us over after the 400, you know, or for those 400 years. So we see an uh, ending of the ironic priesthood among Jacob's true ethnic line, but then there's a pickup at the Council of Gemini among the Esau and the Edomite line. This is where the Edomites, Esau is linked with the Edomites, come into it, the Euro Jews and the Ashkenazi. Now, this is a note we want to make. Some of them, some of them is sincere. There's a wild olive tree, as Paul mentioned, but it sincerely has been grafted in by the will of the Almighty, by the will of Hashem. I want one to understand it because there's a lot of hyper rhetoric and a lot of that doesn't do us any good in spirit and truth and really seeing what the truth is. It just makes people's emotionalism, but it's not to the logic and the reality. It's appeal to, to, to un an irrational emotions, and the Almighty doesn't, doesn't, doesn't want us to be um, children in doctrine, you understand, children in teaching. So here it says, for the priesthood being changed, they're made of necessity a change of law. So the priesthood being changed also brought about a change of law. So when we understand the Ethiopia connection, we can see a part of that change of the law, of the authority, of the kingship, of the monarchy. And it says, for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, not Levi anymore, but another tribe of whom no man gave attendance at the altar. No man was able to give attendance in the holy altar of the tabernacle because the Levites, they're the ones who had that attendance. They were, they were the priests of that altar. But now it says to us, for it is evident that our Lord, Adonai, or Adonenu, or Geatachin, Igazinet, that our Lord sprang out of Yehuda, sprang out of Judah, or the tribe of Judah, 
of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So Moses didn't speak concerning the, this priesthood, this Melchizedek priesthood that come out of the line of the tribe of Judah. But the word says, this is, this is it. This is real. And yet it is far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek or Melchizedek, there ariseth another another priest, another priestical order. So many say, what is this Rastafari thing now? Rastafari say it's about priesthood because there's another priestical order that arises. And so we have his majesty representing that kingship of the lion of the tribe of Judah on the throne of David. We have the Beta Israel. We have the Ethiopian Hebrews at home and abroad. We have all the evidence of Yaakov's true line. We have Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68, that Esau can't prove that any of this happened. Now, did they go through an affliction in, in, in World War II with the so-called Nazis and so forth. So most, most definitely, we don't have to be anti-Shemitic. We are Shemitic. Even if one has been grafted into our root, of course they did. But how does that obfuscate what has happened to our people or still is continuing to happen to our people, to the lost sheep of the Beit to Israel? But it goes back to the blessing. You see, Kedus, Georgis, or St. George, now as we go to the next part of it, it says that the Abrahamic family held the Edenic promise. There was a promise made in the Aden and even in the Gulf of Aden. Look on the map. Find out where Eden is. You can see on the map the approximate area in the cipher where Eden was. Look at the Gulf of Aden. That's the Horn of Africa. That's Ethiopia. Right there is the Gulf of Aden. So who would have the access to this Edenic prom promise? It would be the line of the tribe of Judah because it says right here that the Abrahamic family held the Edenic promise of the Satan bruiser in Genesis 3 and 15. So when we go right here under Satan bruiser, you can read Genesis 3 and 15. 3 and 15 is the Satan bruiser. Now, that's in the line of Abel, of Seth, of Shem of Abraham, of Yishak, and it would have been to Esau, but Esau for materialism, for materialism, you understand? And for carnalism, he sold that birthright. So that's where, that is where he lost it. Now Esau, as the firstborn, he was in the direct line of the Abrahamic promise of the earth blesser in Genesis, according to Genesis 12 and 3. So we have... Genesis, right, 12 and 3. Genesis 12 and 3. He would have been the earth blesser. Now, this is a key connection. These two especially. And the Ras, the head of the family, in his majesty, is this full Bukorina made manifest. And the reason why his majesty symbol, you understand, and the symbol of, of Ethiopia's patron is Kedus Georgis. And hopefully you'll get to learn more about the truth of the true life and how he was a, a, a soldier of Christ and how he also was martyred too. You understand? And it's a very, I didn't even know it would be that touching, really learning the, the, the full story of the real, the real um, Hebrew, you understand, that was known later on as Georgis. But his name has the key because Georgis means geo, gay, ge, orgis, go, or, or earth worker earth worker, one who works the earth, one who labors for the earth. This links with the earth blesser, the earth blesser, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And one time Ethiopia, in obedience, was, 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 was fat and flourishing. You understand, Africa, we know this. They know this. What has happened is that the true heirs or inheritors, you understand, are lost in mistranslation, are, are lost in Babylon, are distracted away from their real responsibility. In a sense, even our people have, especially in this time materially, they have sold their birthright too for bling bling and all of these other things as well. So they lost out on that real blessing. But these two connect directly to Georgis, saint, which means that he was a holy one. He took his covenant seriously about being separated to God for the work of God, and he was one of the early Christian soldiers, but his name means earth worker. You understand? Earth worker. He was a Satan bruiser. Satan, Satan bruiser where Caduce Georgis, where he conquers the dragon. 
And like we said, this is a real story and a real history. Some of it was preserved by the British. The British preserved some of it because that goes back to the black nobility. You see, the black nobility, that was one of the shields of the black, the ancient black nobility. And it's a proof of it. Some people might doubt it, but let's get the reality. World War II would have never been won if it wasn't for the Tuskegee Airmen, the Buffalo Soldiers. And neither would the war for independence, neither would the war against terrorism that's going on right now as well. So they, 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 they know this. So this is also part of that, of that soldier read, that Satan head bruising. You understand when the you know when the black man is in military service as well as in the earth, beating one's weapons of war into plowshares now becomes the next part of that as the earth blesser, as the earth blessing, the earth tiller. One of the reasons why we're about to approach a global famine, you understand, is because the black man by and large, is not working the earth, he's not bruising Satan's head, and he's not the Ross, the head of the family, carrying out those priestical rites. So he is, in a sense, he is not in his bekurna, he is not in his blessing or, the, or birthright. You understand, if he's not in his birthright, then that means Esau or Esau's world, you understand, or Esau really is not, the, not really the real bad guy. It's the Canaanites that are the bad guy, in other words, in the story. You understand, a white supremacy is the real is the real bad guy in the story. You understand, according to the scripture, it says so. Because the, the tribe of Canaan were eleven. There are eleven um, American nations. A new book out there called American Nation. Go on, check out, check it out a little bit. Google it. American Nation by some Woodard. I forgot his first name. Something something Woodard. But it talks about how America is not all these thirteen colonies. There's really eleven nations. Eleven European nations came over here. So we keep seeing this eleven, and eleven is one lower than 12. Remember the prophecy that Canaan was supposed to be the servant, but Canaan, the Canaanites flipped things too, similar to what happened with Esau and Jacob as well. So we thought it was just important for us to just teach squarely on St. George, what St. George mean. George mean earth worker, but what role? He was one of the Christian saints or the Ethiopian knights, you understand, the Hebraic knights who was a on bruiser in keeping this particular um, Edenic blessing. And then he also was an earth blesser. You understand how this symbol is a symbol of the head of our family, of Kadmari Haile Selassie, and is also a link. There's a, there's, there's a very important link between the black nobility of England, you understand, of Great Britannia, as well as Ethiopia, when you really start to, to put uh, the, the patron saint, Caduce Georgis. What is that connection? The connection between Ethiopia and Britain is the black nobility. You understand? Is that particular black nobility? And that's another part of our story. So just to sum up here, this is for all that was revealed. And Esau might have been fulfilled these two great messianic prophecies for all that was revealed among Esau, the European Jews and the Ashkenazi, they had the ability, you understand, to fulfill these two great messianic promises. But this birthright Esau sold for a momentary fleshy gratification. He sold this birthright for a momentary fleshy gratification. And there's an interesting connection with the so-called European Jews on this particular matter that many of their rabbis have already been talking about it. Some of the anti-Zionist Hasidim also have been trying to tell them about it, but they don't want to hear that. They want to be secular. But whenever you say anything, they want to say anti-Semitic and you're persecuting them and the Holocaust. But they're not really keeping the birthright or the covenant either. So, you know, check that out, if you will. But Jacob's conception, which is the black man's conception of the birthright, at that time, just like now among many of us, has been more fleshy carnal in the sense that we black. So that means we are such and such, but not really in the righteousness of God and Christ, and therefore it's inadequate. However, here's the good part is the, the desire or the will. Let thy will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As long as we keep in that particular desire, it is the evidence. It is just one of the evidences 
of the true faith. faith. So more to come of the Ritter Haimano, so we call it Tawahido. More to come, my brothers and sisters, y'all willing. So stay tuned. Shalom. Ras Tefari.